Right, a quick Excel tip on how to deal with outliers in Excel. Uh, now I do this in teaching labs a lot. So let's have a look at what we've got here. I've got something that say, let's make this, uh, say it's a calibration graph. There's a concentration and an absorbance. We don't really care about units right now because we're not really talking about that. I'm going to insert my scatter graph. So just a scatter graph, fairly standard. Uh, I'm going to quickly tidy it up just to clear it. We don't need those because we're just copying it into a report. We're going to use figure caption. I'm going to get rid of the grid lines. They usually get in the way. Uh, everything else is all right. And now I want to right click, add a trend line, make sure it's linear, add the equation and the R squared value. Uh, let's just stick that up there. We could tidy that up a little later, but that'd be for another video. And what we can see is that value in the middle is an outlier. It doesn't really fit on the line. Maybe it's dragging our line off in the wrong direction a little bit more so it's not very accurate. So what we'd want to do ideally is get rid of it. And we can see the R squared jumps up to 0.98. That's probably good enough. Um, but that's hidden a bit of data and that's not great. You don't want to be hiding your data because we could keep that going. We could actually hide that. Oh, oh this one doesn't fit anymore. Yay, now I've got a R squared of 999. Uh, and what I've done is just hidden data that doesn't fit the line. That's not, that's not good practice. Um, so we're going to do it this in a way that we can get the right R squared value and the right uh, trend line, but still show the data. So I'm going to highlight the whole um, graph here. So if you highlight the whole thing, what you'll notice is that up here it highlights what data that graph is using. Uh, the purple being the x-axis, the blue being the y-axis. And if I find these little blue tags in the corner, I can click on them and drag them to the right, and that adds a new data set to it. Now you can do that manually by right-clicking and going select data and adding, and what we can see is it's added a new one. We could keep adding more manually using that, but I find it easy just to drag this along. And providing your data is uh, nice and coherent and tabled properly, Excel will do that. If your data is disjointed and your x-axis and y-axis are in completely different locations, uh, it won't be smart enough to figure that out. So now well, we've got a second data series. I'm going to take this cell here. That's got my 0.35. It's clearly an outlier. It's actually less than the previous number, so that's probably not right. And on the green line, uh, hover over it. You get the double-headed arrows and just drag that to the right. And there we have it. This is just the basic outline of it. We've got in blue here the data that we want, and the orange is the data that's been removed. We're not going to include that, but we are showing it, but it's not being used to calculate the R squared, uh, for instance. Now, I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit by let's format that data series and come and have a look here. And this is just a personal preference of mine. You don't need to do this. I'm going to go to the marker options and I'm going to change this to an X. So instead of the automatic circle, I'm going to change it to an X because it's X, it's crossed out. I'll go back into it. I'm going to go back to this paint bucket and the line, no, the line, still the marker options and the border color. I'm going to change it to a red color. And that just says, oh, well, that's a data point, but we've excluded it. And I'll probably explain that in a figure caption. I'll copy and paste it into a report, and underneath it will be figure three, calibration graph, the red X means I've excluded the data point. Uh, and that would be how I would then go ahead and recommend that you present that. It works really nicely. One problem is this will then break things like your line stats function. So if you're doing an array formula to do uh, line stats on it and you do known y's and known x's it stops working that to work there that needs to be continuous data so what you could do to fix that is drag this down to the bottom or your outliers you can stick uh, on the bottom for instance uh, and then your data is then continuous, uh, or contiguous at least, and the line stats function will work. Because remember on a scatter graph, it doesn't matter what order these data points come in. So if you've dragged and dropped your right ones uh, that you don't want to include on the graph into that column, then you can reorder it and possibly even do it with a filter that might work. And then you can run the line stats on it.
But that's uh, a more a, that's actually more of a broader problem with using Excel when you're trying to do analysis and presentation. The way that you analyze something and the way you present it are usually two completely different techniques. So hopefully that's covered a little bit how you might want to present something that has an outlier. Um, this I'm not going to go into stats about how you decide whether something's an outlier. Uh, usually most of these cases if we're just doing teaching our chemistry you'll just eyeball it off a trend line but it should be fairly obvious that that one you can exclude but you don't want to hide it and lie about it because you don't want to manipulate and lie about your data.